Hey and welcome back to a new video. Today I will talk about how to optimize the speed of your Webflow website and I will share 10 ideas on how to improve your page speed and I will also show you in Webflow directly how you can actually do it. And as an example here, I have my private website. So I just put it up a couple of years back. It is not optimized at all. So let's take a look what we can do here. So first thing to notice, hack number one is you should make sure that you don't have any third party scripts or as little third party scripts in here as possible. So for example, if I'm going to the project of my website, um, what I have in here is the Google Tag Manager. So the Google Tag Manager, I use it to have a couple of other scripts that are loaded on my website, stuff like Google Analytics, but this could also be something like Hotjar, Facebook Pixel, you name it. And in general, the um, fewer the scripts, the better for your loading time, because every script here that is loading is a JavaScript file basically, and it takes some time to connect to their servers, but also download the JavaScript. So make sure to check all of the scripts that are in your Tag Manager, or if you are not using Tag Manager at all, you can also just go into the project, check your head code, the footer code, um, and just delete everything that is not needed for your website. Okay, second up, if we are talking about scripts, there's also one other thing that you can do. So let's imagine we have a script that is only relevant for one subpage. So for example, if we have a script here, which, uh, which we are using to lazy load the blog articles on my website. So right now, as you can see, they are all under each other, but we could lazy load them whenever someone scrolls and we could use a script for that, for example, from FinSuite, here and if I want to use it I could put it into the custom code head section for the whole project or I could go to the custom code section of the specific page in Webflow. So for example here the CMS load is just added to the page where it's needed and if we are doing it like this we are saving uh, a ton of loading time and it gives us also more flexibility. Okay, let's move over to hack number three. Hack number three is about compressing images and serving images in the right formats. So whenever you are uploading an image to your website, you can do it in a ton of different ways. Most of the time you will probably export it from some graphic program and then just throw it in here or into your media library. And in general, there are different formats with different sizes and different advantages. If you are using a PNG image, it's an image that can be transparent, but it's quite big in size. And for example, if you are using a JPEG image, most of the time it's already a little bit um, smaller in size, um, but for example, you can't have transparency. Um, Webflow gives us one very nice opportunity here and we can go to the assets panel. And everything that you uploaded till now to your website, uh, you can just compress and change to the right format with one click. So we are going to expand the panel here and then we are going to select all assets and we can click compress here. And now something interesting pops up because the Webflow suggests that we are converting the image to some of the newer file formats, so WebP or AVIF. And this is super cool because these file formats weren't existent a couple of years back. So these are very, very new and they store the same information about the image in a um, yeah, smaller dimension basically or smaller file size. So that's super cool. And if I click compress here, um, all of the images now will be compressed and then automatically exchanged on the website. So as you can see here, before it was PNG, now it's AWIF uh, and the loading time will be way, way quicker for your website. Also, whenever you are uploading something to the CMS here, it is already um, automatically compressed, optimized, and then served towards the browser, towards the user that is opening up your website. In general, Webflow is also super nice for this because they are serving one image in different dimensions. So for example, if you are browsing the website with your phone, the image can be way, way smaller. Uh, and when you are on the website with your huge computer, it needs to be bigger and Webflow is automatically transforming all of the image into different sizes. And so we save a ton of loading time also just by doing that.
Next up, there is one very interesting thing that you can do. So let's imagine we are loading my website here. And there's one image here in the hero and we need it obviously, we need to see the image when we are opening up the website. So if you click on the image here in Webflow, you can see on the right that its type is set to auto. Means um, the default state of the browser decides how this image is loaded. There are two other opportunities or options to do. First one is eager. So this image would load exactly in the moment that the page is loading or the second one would be lazy load. So it loads on scroll and all the images down here we can for example put to lazy load because we don't need them when we load the page for the first time but it's okay if they load once the user scrolls down and this this also saves a ton of time because we can load them while the user is already going through the website and trying to get the information. Number five now is about fonts. So not relevant for all of you, but some of you might have installed some fonts to your website. If you are going to the Webflow project, to the font sections, you can see here, for example, that I'm using a custom font. Um, that is like this. Um, I have uploaded it and first of all I have defined a fallback. So fallback is super super uh, important because if this font can't be loaded or isn't lo loaded quickly enough we are changing to a different font and the user can still read what's written on the website. But in general I have to say whenever you are uploading a custom font it makes your website way slower. So whenever you can, don't use these installed fonts, but use the fonts that are already on the uh, user's computers. For example, Inter or Open Sans, stuff like this is on every computer and that makes your website quicker. If you want something special, obviously you can upload a custom font, but then be aware that this will reduce the page speed of your website. Um, okay, so... Next up, what we want to uh, talk about is uh, minimize and defer JavaScript. So first of all, there's one way to do this and it's if we are clicking on to, um, let's see, publishing. So if we are in the project here and click on publishing, there are some advanced publishing options. And what we want to do here is we want to enable SSL, we want to minify HTML, we want to minify CSS and we want to minify JavaScript. So what does it mean? Basically in your CSS, HTML and JavaScript, there are all of these gaps inside. And these gaps are um, basically just to make it more readable for the one that is programming them. But we can, for example, minify all of them just to make sure that these gaps are deleted when the web website is deployed. And that makes it super, super easy for us to save some loading time because the overall file size of the HTML, CSS and JavaScript is smaller. Okay, so this was number six, I guess. And now let's move over to number seven. For number seven, it's all about deleting unused styles. So whenever you are designing your website and you are trying to add styles here, um, there might be the moment that you are adding a style and you were using it at some point, but in the future you are not using it anymore. And if I want to find out about those, I can just go to the style selector here and use this little clean up unused styles tab. And this one is telling me basically, ah, there is a style that's called unused style. So I was preparing it for you and you can with one click remove it. And obviously everything that we don't need reduces the amount of space that uh, our, like the, the size of our files of our website and this makes the website faster. So make sure to remove everything that is unused in terms of CSS. And for the next one, you can basically do the same also for any kind of interactions. So let's imagine I have an interaction here, an animation that is popping up and at some point I decide, okay, I don't want it anymore. In general, animations make the website slower. So whenever you are using them, be aware it is making your website slower. 
And also if you're not using them anymore, there might be still the scripts for the animation in your code. So what I want to do here is I'm going to interactions and as we can see, nothing is happening here. But if I click here on cleaning up animations and triggers, there's one that I used back then. I don't need it anymore. So I can basically delete it and make my website way, way faster in this case. Okay. Uh, another one that I want to tell you about is number nine. And number nine is about your CMS. In general, the CMS is super, super nice in Webflow because it helps us to store content in a very easy way and make it also editable for a lot of users that don't have a web development background. On my website here, as you can see, I have a lot of blog articles or news features and I can scroll down for quite some time. And as you can imagine, all these images and all these content needs to be loaded. If I want to make this faster, I could go to the uh, blog page here that I'm having and instead of loading all of them at the same time, I could go in here, pick the collection list wrapper, go to settings and then say I want to paginate the items. So here, as you can see, I can say, please only show, I don't know, seven or eight items on the website and then paginate to the next one. Sometimes it makes sense to do this, sometimes it doesn't make sense to do it, but for the page speed, it is very, very beneficial. As an alternative to using a pagination, you can also load the items um, almost like a lazy load. Once you scroll down the website, you can use something like uh, FinSuite CMS load for this, just as a little side fact on this one. Okay, so now we have already talked about nine ideas to improve your page speed and for the last one there is actually um, one thing that we can do also about the javascripts that we are embedding so if we are going to the blog page here i was telling you that we want to make sure that almost nothing is loading before the website itself is loading. And whatever we are including here obviously takes time to load and slows down the website process. And if we are, for example, embedding scripts here, there are a couple of ways to do this. So you can use this async um, attribute in the script tag or you can use the defer attribute in the script tag. It depends a little bit on the script if you can actually use defer, but just to explain it to you really, really quickly, the defer attribute is uh, used in a very good way to basically have the script load or like execute once the page is already loaded. The async, if we are using that one, it's in parallel to the page. So for example, if the script is not super important for what is shown on the page, this is totally fine to use defer and then it will increase the page speed. If we need it right away, then we use async, for example. Okie dokie. So these were my 10 ideas to improve the page speed of your Webflow website. I hope you liked the video. If you want to learn more about marketing, design and Webflow, make sure to follow the account below. If you are looking for someone that is helping with your Webflow website, make sure to check out magia.com, our design and Webflow service. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, see you in the next video.